Hi everyone and welcome to Rum Runner Dance. I'm Dan Genovese. Today we're making a tiki cocktail, the Hawaiian Room. For today's episode, we're going to switch it up here a little bit. We're doing the Hawaiian Room, which is a cocktail I've never tasted. I've never made it and have no preconceived notions about it. Now I picked it, well, I'm going to be honest, the way that I picked it was I normally film a couple episodes in a day and when I do filming and I kind of ran out <laughs> and I didn't plan too far ahead. And I'm like, you know what? I want to roll with it. Let's roll with that. Let's pick a cocktail I never did before and let's do an episode on that. So I'm actually going to show you this one. This one comes from Beach Bum Berries Remix, uh, link below. Make sure that you pick up this book if you don't have it. It's, it has a wax finish on it. So if you spill something on this, you can wipe it off, which is cool. Uh, the pages are not wax, but the outside cover is. So definitely bar friendly. All right, so the Hawaiian Room. Um, this comes from the Hawaiian room of the Lexington Hotel in New York City around 1940s. Uh, Swiss chef actually made the Hawaiian's room authentic, quote, authentic Polynesian food, but the dancers were imported from Tahiti. The floor show was an instant success upon its 1937 debut and launching the career of Hulao Haiti and later featuring Steve Allen who broadcasted a live TV show from the Hawaiian Room stage in the mid-1950s. Sounds kind of cool. Let's get into making this cocktail because I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what we're in for today. Uh, today, we're going to be serving this up in a coupe glass, which they said a cocktail glass, and coupe glass is the closest thing I have. So I'm going to chill this sucker down first, so we're going to grab some ice. Yeah, I know. I'm at home. I grab the ice with my hands. Normally I wouldn't. Um, today I am. So, chill that down. Let's get that going. Next, we're gonna need to grab our mixing tins and let's start measuring out some stuff here. So, first thing we're gonna have here is fresh lemon juice. We're gonna need a half an ounce. Next, we're gonna need pineapple juice, half an ounce. Spirits now. Next is triple sec. I'm using Quantrone here. You can use any kind of good triple sec that you'd like. Um, we're gonna need half an ounce of this as well. A lot of the sweetness coming here from the pineapple and definitely from the triple sec. As you can tell, there's no syrups in this drink. Next, we're gonna break out something it's kind of new for this channel. Not definitely new to the Rum Runner because this stuff is fantastic. This is Laird's Straight Apple Brandy. If you do not know about Laird's or Apple Brandy, oh, you need to. Um, fall is coming up here soon. Right now it's August when I'm filming this. Um, and October is, I believe it's October. If it's not, I'm gonna correct myself below. Um, is Apple Month and Apple Brandy is huge then. Uh, I love Laird's, they're straight Apple Brandy. This is bottled in bond. This was really hard to get for a very long time. This is the oldest distillery in the country. This one, it, there's like a story of General Washington wanting this. I believe it was General Washington. Yeah, I think it was General Washington that wanted this recipe. Um, this stuff is fantastic. I love they're uh, bottled in bond. It's 100% made from apple juice and then distilled. That's what a brandy is. It's distilled from a fruit juice that was fermented versus a grain or sugar that was fermented, um, which that's the major difference between distillates. So this one right here, we're gonna need a half an ounce of this. And don't confuse this with like, like an apple, just give you an idea. This smells like brandy, okay? It doesn't smell like 
a Macintosh, okay? So don't confuse this with like, like a apple liqueur or something like that. It's not that. Um, it does have an apple-y flavor to it, um, but it's not like a sweet apple thing. It's more like a brandy. Next thing we're gonna need is original recipe here calls for light style Cuban rum. I can't get really good light style Cuban rum around me. So I sub it and the way I sub it and Beach Plum Berry talks about subbing um, Cuban style rum inside of his book with Virgin Island rum. Love that. Uh, Cruzan, you can pick up their lightly aged their three year, good stuff. I can get Denison real easy in Plantation Three Star. I love Denison um, a lot. So I sub them in every single time that I have a lightly aged or Cuban style rum. For this one, we're gonna need an ounce. All right. Now, that takes care of our ingredients. Wipe the hands off here a little bit. Next we're gonna need here is some ice. I fill this guy about halfway up with ice. That's the way I like to go. You're gonna dump that guy in there, just like that. Seat him in, seal it in real nice. Give it a hard shake. That didn't release because I didn't pop it well enough. It was more because my hands were a little bit, a little bit wet from the condensation. All right, next, our coupe glass here that we had was chilling out with some ice in it. We're gonna take this guy and dump it out. Now we're gonna double strain. The book says single strain. It's a coupe glass, it's a cocktail glass. I'm not putting anything else to hide ice chips. I want it to be nice. So I wanna get as many chips as I possibly can. So we're gonna double strain this. All right, there we go. That's nice. Now it doesn't really call for a garnish, but the garnish in the book was pretty elaborate. Um, I wasn't about to do that inside of a cocktail glass. So uh, I'm just gonna grab myself here a dehydrated lemon wheel. So we've got some lemon in this from Cocktail Garnish Company, link below grab some of the amazing dehydrated fruit that they have there. We're just gonna take that guy just like this. We're gonna go ahead and clip him right onto the side. That looks real nice. Woodrow coaster, put that down. And there you have it, everyone. The Hawaiian room. Let's give it a taste. That was not what I was expecting. Really not what I was expecting. All right, let, let me talk about this. First is the flavor on this is very much, well, it's not too surprising. It's very much the rum and the brandy. I thought with a half an ounce of pineapple in here, you would get more of a pineapple flavor in it I was wrong on that. Um, you don't really get too much of the pineapple flavor coming through. You get a little bit of the sweetness from it, a little bit of sweetness of the triple sec, but the predominant flavor here is the brandy and the rum. So in that, it's actually very good. Um, I would prefer a more spirit accentuated drink than a kind of a spirit equal to a fruit juice kind of a drink. So this is a little bit more spirit forward. Um, the nose on this is actually, comp I, I would really recommend if you make this that you smell this one first, because the smell on this is so predominantly like orangey, lemony, and the pineapple-y. It, it's like you smell the fruit, but when you taste it, Yeah, it's like immediate. 
it's immediately the rum and the brandy that are the predominant flavors. So it's kind of like a play on, it's like a duality here. It's like your, your smell is telling your senses one thing, your taste is telling them something totally different. Um, so it's kind of keeping you kind of contention there and pulling on, um, you know, kind of like the senses and the way that you're perceiving this drink. It, it, I would give this drink, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. I, I'll be honest, this probably wouldn't be one that I put in my regular repertoire. I think this is a great cocktail for some people. Uh, for me, it's kind of missing something here. There could be a tiny bit more transfer of the sweet into the drink. And I think if you did that, it would make it much more approachable for most, for most people. Um, and especially for me, I think I would enjoy it a lot more. Um, I'm a very big fan of spirit forward drinks, but in this case, I'm thinking a little bit more sweet in here would help um, accentuate some of those flavors. And I don't mean a lot of sweet. I mean, maybe like a teaspoon of, uh, of at most even a teaspoon of like simple and this would taste really, really good. I'm not going to put it in and try to mix it in now because that wouldn't work. Um, but the next time I make it, I might try it that way and see how that actually works. Um, but there you have it, everyone. It's Hawaiian room. It's a, it's a tasty little drink that uses both rum and apple brandy in it. And it's pretty tasty. Um, give this one a shake and uh, comment below. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you agree with uh, my assessment of this drink, if it could help with a little bit more sweetness or if you like it the way it is. Check out these other videos that we have down here. Again, we're making them all the time on classic tiki drinks, classic, uh, regular classic drinks, as well as original ones just by me. Thanks so much, everyone. And until next time, everybody, Kole Maluna.